What is up, guys? We are live, 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 live on YouTube on this Friday evening. What is up, guys? I'll let you guys hop on here, take a second. Uh, it's been a good week for me. Um, I've had a couple days to get some stuff done. And uh, what is up, Major Yui? <laughs> Casey, hey, hey, hey. Brian, hello, hello. Uh, love it that I'm starting to get some regulars on here. We're starting to be a little community on here. Speaking of communities, that's why it was also a good week. Launched my new Facebook group exclusive. Hi, Vanessa. Exclusive for people enrolled in my classes or people working with me. M. Taez, what is up? So we started this new Facebook group this week. I'm super excited about it. <laughs> we are going to replace studentdoctor.net with my new Facebook group. It is for people who are enrolled in my courses and my coaching students. And I'm on there answering questions, providing feedback, and just helping out. We're creating this community, like I said, building students who want positivity and want support around them. So I'm really excited about that. Um, also, this is kind of exciting too, and I'm going to be talking about this kind of throughout this broadcast because I think it's important for you guys. But how many of you guys are working on your application? How many of you guys work on your personal statement? What is up, Brant? What is up, Brian? Hello. Yes, do you guys like this background? This is that way so you guys don't have to see like this is this is this is not this is not real. This is just some cloth here. <laughs> but this is that way you guys don't have to see like my house. This I think it adds a little class, does it not? Like if I had a collared shirt on, even though I don't wear really collared shirts, but I could put a collared shirt on, you guys feel like I'm I'm fancy in here right now. This is not fancy. This is just um, but uh, so the Facebook group I mentioned, the second thing is you guys should be putting on the final touches of your personal statement, of your application, getting all that stuff ready. How many of you guys out there are struggling with it? I know a lot of you guys are struggling because I keep getting the emails, I keep getting all these alerts on YouTube and on my Facebook and on my Instagram telling me that you guys need help with your personal statement with your application. So, as always, right, I'm providing you guys low-cost resources that can help you be better. So I'm gonna be offering a webinar, it's one time only, we're gonna get on a webinar and I'm actually gonna go through how you write the perfect personal statement. I'm gonna go through application strategy and I'm gonna go through kind of scenarios with you in your application that might be your certain situation, kind of the do's and don'ts to help you make the most of your application of your personal statement. And I'll be bringing that to you guys. It'll be $20, it's nothing, right? For expert personal statement and application support. We're gonna be doing that webinar. So check out my website event page um, either tonight or tomorrow. I'll be putting that link up for you guys to register. It is limited seating. I am not joking, guys. We are capping it because I want to have an exclusive group where we can kind of get in there and people aren't afraid to share and we have quality people on there. So check that out. Get on there quickly. All right, so to tonight's question. The title of this video is what extracurricular should you put on your application and how do you stand out on the application, right? Because you guys are putting your applications together right now and some of you guys are struggling with this and I... <laughs> I see so many kind of back and forth about how to present your activities and what's acceptable and what's not. And so what I want to tell you guys, it's very, 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 very simple. Okay. Very, very, very simple. Yes, Veronica, we'll do after hours for the webinar for you cats that work like me, right? Because I work, so it does have to be after hours. Uh, we'll probably have it be 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, so that link will be coming out. But anyway, so how do you stand on your application how do you write your activity section, right? You only have so many slots. And I think one of the big issues that students kind of create for themselves right off the bat is they make it seem like they have to fill up all the activities. And while you should have enough activities to fill up the whole activity section, that's not the big deal, right? Because if you are a person who fills out your application, you have one or two activities, but those activities are amazing, are out of this world, then you will be in a better position than someone who has 20 activities that are nothing. And what I mean by that is, a lot of you guys run out there and you chase activities. Oh, I'm in this club, that club, that other club. But when you think about it, right, and everything we talk about wanna be strategic, when you think about putting your application together and the people you're applying against, how many people are gonna be able to say, I was a member of the uh, pre-med student society at my school. How many people are going to be able to say, oh, you know what? I was a member of Flying Samaritans. Oh, I was a member of this organization. How many people are going to be able to say they were members of these common organizations that go around? What's more rare, and this is where you guys should focus, again, right? Preparation, right? It's all in the preparation. 
When you guys are involved with activities, you should be looking for opportunities to be a leader. Look for leadership opportunities because then instead of saying member, you can say president. Vice Let's see if we're going to get back on here live. I think we're back live. So it's so interesting. People call. I'm on the cell phone. We're doing this live stream. People call and they interrupt the feed. I don't know if you guys catch on or catch off. So are we back? I think we're back. Um, if we're back, like this video real quick. If we're back, let me see some thumbs up on here so I know that we are back live and we have all made it back onto the stream. Okay, I'm seeing some thumbs up. Okay, we're back on the stream. Okay, so hello, Adrian. Hello, hello, hello. So um, back on the stream. So what I was saying, if we got cut off there, let's go back to our application. <laughs> Preparation. Hey, 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 Terry. So we're going to go back early on in your career when you're involved in club. And this is why it's important. People try to tell you, oh, wait to get involved in clubs. Absolutely, you should wait to get involved in clubs until you have your academic stuff together. But you don't want to wait too long because it's important to get involved in these clubs early. That way you can move through the ranks and get those leadership positions. It's hard to come into a club first year and say, hey, listen, I want to be the president. Well, why? Because everyone's already in there. There's infrastructure set up. They already had the incumbent coming in who's going to step up and be the president. So it's important you get involved freshman, sophomore year in these clubs. That way you can, you know, first year you're a member. Second year, you're some position. Third year, the president, right? You move up through the ranks. That's the first part. The second part I'll say is if you're going to be involved in these clubs and say you can't get a leadership position and sometimes you don't want a leadership position, right? You don't want a, a full blown position where you're going to be having to put out a lot of energy, right? And what we're talking about is productivity. So we want to get out more than we put in. And so the way you do that, and this is a kind of workaround, is instead of actually looking for an actual leadership position, you create opportunities for leadership. Right. And what I mean by that is you take over a project, you propose a project, you start something for the club that you can do in a short time period that comes off as leadership when you go to write off your application. But that doesn't require a whole ton of time. So an example of this would be if you started a fundraising drive. So if you raised funds for whatever it might be and you did a six month fundraiser. Now you've spent six months heading up a fundraiser, and when you go to write up your activity section, you can say, I was a uh, fundraising leader for this organization. I led this fundraiser, and we were able to raise this many thousand dollars for this cause, which is an amazing cause that's near and dear to my heart, and I'm passionate about it. Let me tell you about my passion. You can write about that in the activity section, and that way you're not just saying, I was a member of this club, this club does this. You can focus instead on what you did to make yourself distinct and distinguished to stand out on your application. I hope that makes sense to everybody. So it's a way that you don't actually have to have a formalized position, but you can create an opportunity because no one in a club is going to be like, oh, well, we don't want you to fundraise or, oh, we don't want to put on a dance, right? So look for opportunities to find short-term leadership that looks more impactful on your application than the time you spent doing it. So it's high yield and low takeaway from your own time that you'd be using for other things. And so that's a good tip. Now, let's say you're past that point, now you're to the application, how do you really sell it and take it home? So the application for starters is all about selling yourself. And so many students miss this boat and they wanna talk about how, oh, you should be humble and you should talk about your faults and you should be like, like no, it shouldn't be him and Haman and, and, you know, oops, I don't know if I should be here. You need to be 100% confident, 1,000% full steam ahead, letting them know, listen, if you don't let me in your school, you're an idiot. If you don't think that I'm going to be the best medical student you've ever had, you've got problems. And if you come at it that way, <laughs> you will be much more successful in your application than if you take time and you're like, well... I had some issues and I had some more issues. And so it may look bad from outside, but I want to assure you that I'm slowly improving. No, nobody wants, right? <laughs> it's like that show, like, what is it? It's, it's uh, love it or leave it, right? And they fix up the house. <laughs> Which house do they always pick? They always pick the house that's the nicest. Nobody wants a fixer upper, right? Everyone wants a finished product. So when you come to medical schools, you want to let them know, listen, whatever's happened in the past, that's all the old me. The new me is a baller and I'm ready to ball out in your medical school. So let me in. Let me have it. Let me go at it. OK, so with that being said, right, so we're going to bring this confidence, bring this stuff. Right. We're going to bring who we are. We're going to let them know how fantastic we are. 
But at the same time, it's a very fine line. And I run into this a lot when I review people's personal statements or we go through and make their application is people aren't used to talking about themselves, right? People aren't used to talking about themselves. By the way, Mike Dempsey, I saw that comment right there. It's of course the Golden State Warriors, guys. Let's get it together. Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, this is off topic, but the Golden State Warriors are gonna crush the Cavs because the Golden State Warriors are amazing. I am a huge fan of the Golden State Warriors. I don't know about the Kevin Durant thing coming over, but anyway, sidetracked. So let's get back to it. Application. So talking with confidence and talking about yourself is new to a lot of us. A lot of us are taught both from our parents and from our pre-med advisors and from all these people to be humble and never talk about yourself, never brag about yourself. And now, right, you have me telling you, you need to brag about yourself. And so when that happens, some people struggle to make that transition to brag about themselves. And so what I want to help you guys to understand is how you brag about yourself without bragging about yourself. <laughs> and the way you do this, and this is a huge tip, guys, this is humongous. And we're going to go into real detail about this in the webinar. But this is the biggest thing you could ever understand is how to talk about yourself without bragging about yourself. Okay. If you want to brag about yourself and the characteristics that you hold in your heart, the way you do that without actually seeming really braggadocious and seeming like you're talking about yourself is to tell stories. And in these stories, you always have a hero and you talk about how this hero embodies certain characteristics by certain things they did and you talk them up and you brag about them and then you say, you flip it and you say, this is what I aspire to be. This is how I try to live my life. This is what I emulate. And by saying that, what you've just done is indirectly in their mind, tied yourself to that person's heroics. And the example I'll use with you is this, from my personal statement. And actually, oh, I should have, I could have uh, printed out my personal statement. We could have read some of that. I'll do that for the webinar. I'll read some of my personal statement. You guys can get into my real head from back in the day. All right, so uh, <laughs> we'll get into my head on the webinar, but not here. But basically, if you guys don't know, I'm an, I'm an anesthesia resident. I've known I wanted to do anesthesia since junior year of high school. And the reason I knew that was because my school actually had a program where you could, I was in like the science academy part of my, my school where if you were interested in science, science, you were in this kind of group. And so... As part of that, we had a shadowing program where you could go shadow some profession. And so I wrote down doctor on my form. I was like, I want to be a doctor. I wrote down doctor on my form. And luckily, I got paired with an anesthesiologist. And this guy was like the smartest person I've still to this day ever met. And at the same time, in addition to being smart, he was very caring and generous with his patients. And so I kind of got exposed to this anesthesia side. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want to be that guy. And so when I wrote my personal statement, that's what I said. I said, listen, the reason I want to do anesthesia, the reason I want to be in medicine is because of this guy who I got to shadow. His name's Dr. Jack Skein, or sorry, Dr. Steven Skein. <laughs> Jack is his son, um, but Dr. Steven Skein, and he works at Hope Hospital. I'll put him out there. So amazing guy. Um, but in my personal statement, I wrote to him, I wrote about him and I said, listen, I was able to shadow this physician. This physician was brilliant. He was sharp on everything. He knew what his patients needed, needed. He knew in critical situations what to do. It was like he was a wizard in the operating room. In addition to that, I never realized that anesthesia was actually a specialty where you had to relate to patients. But when I saw Dr. Skane in action, when he would get in there in patients' most scared moments before they would go into surgery, and he would take time, no matter if people were rushing him, he would sit down, he'd pull his scrub pants. I still remember that. He, he would sit down, he's a big guy, so he'd have to pull his, you guys, the big guys know what I'm talking about. You have to kind of pull your scrub, like your pants back a little bit to make room for you to sit down. And so he would do that, and he would grab the patient's hand, or he would grab their arm and say, hey, listen, I know you're concerned about today. Tell me what you're concerned about. And he would let the patient just talk and talk and talk about all their concerns. And everything they presented a concern, he would throw it right back at them. I know you're concerned about having a heart attack, but you are not going to have a heart attack. I have never had a patient have a heart attack on me on the table. And you know what we're going to do to prevent your heart attack? I'm going to make sure that you have lots of fluids in your body. I'm going to make sure that I keep your heart rate low. Because when our heart rate gets high, that's really stressful on our heart. I'm going to make sure that your pain is well controlled so we don't stress you out even more. All these things will be done to prevent your heart attack. What else are you concerned about? I'm concerned about being nauseous. Oh, you're concerned about being nauseous? Well, 
We're going to do this for you. We're going to give you some Zofran for your nausea. We're going to give you some steroids for your nausea. I'm going to make sure I don't give you too much anesthesia, too much narcotic to really stop your bowels and to keep you from being nauseous, right? So all those things he would go through with the patient step by step by step by step by step. And say, hey, how do you feel now? And the patient would be like, I feel great. And they, they were like best friends. And so we just had this rapport with patients. Additionally, when we got into the operating room, he was always calling nurses by their first name. Hi, Jan. Hi, whatever, right? Always by their first name. How's such and such doing, right? Asking about their family. All these things, establishing those relationships, letting you know everyone that they, that they matter, that they're all part of the team working together, right? All part of the team working together. Give me one second, guys. All right, person blocked. So we're gonna to work together to as a team and making everyone feel like a valued member. And it all goes around. And so what I did is I told this whole story about him and I laid all that stuff out more eloquently than I did here, but I laid all that stuff out. And then I said at the end, that's the physician that I wanna be. And I work every day to make other people feel included. I work every day to make myself smarter so I can be a capable physician. And I work every day as part of teams to be a team player, something like that I wrote. I'll, we'll read it on the webinar. But when you do that, now you've taken, oh my gosh, right, because you guys, when you're listening to that, how do you feel when I say that? You feel like, oh my gosh, that sounds like an amazing doctor. So then if the, if the reader who's evaluating your personal statement is reading all these great things about this person, and then you then say, this is who I am and want to be, then you've just linked that emotion to that hero to yourself. And then the reviewers are going to be like, oh my gosh, you guys won't believe this. This person is in there helping patients. They're amazing. And you're not even a doctor yet. But in their mind, that's what they've linked. They've linked that to you. And so the way you brag about yourself without... I love how people have to get on here and like use profanity and stuff. I'm sure it's the same character who gets on here every time. But anyway, so when you do those that thing, when you describe someone else and then you tie yourself to it, it makes you seem amazing without coming off. And you guys know what I'm talking about when someone's just bragging and bragging and bragging about how great they are. It comes off as obnoxious. But when you do it that way, you kind of just strategically kind of backdoor them and they're not expecting it as a sneak attack of, of confidence coming at them. So if... If that makes sense to you guys, I know that makes sense. It's always hard to tell. If you guys, that makes sense to you, hit, give me a like right now so I know that I'm on the right track and you guys are with me and you guys feel what I'm saying. I'm going to get you guys questions in a second, but let me know if that makes sense to you guys right now in this moment. Okay, great. Great, 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 great. So um, <clears throat> that's what we're talking about. We're talking about being strategic. And I want to encourage you guys, every day I get questions about different things. Ask yourself, what is the purpose of what I'm doing? What am I trying to achieve? And then ask yourself, how can I achieve it? How can I get there? What's my path of least resistance to get there? And then go. Like all this, there's so much BS out there that's not strategic, right? People just say, oh, do this, do this, do this. We have to have a clear way of actually executing. So when someone tells you in your personal statement, oh, just tell about yourself, make yourself look good. Well, how do you execute that? That right there is one way that you execute it, okay? That's one way you get there. And so... That's what we're focusing on. I want you guys to focus on your own life is look for ways to be strategic and look for ways to be productive, efficient, and get to where you want to go. All right. So give me one second. Okay. So we're going to answer a couple questions. And then, so this is funny. You guys crack me up. You guys, I'll do these hour long streams and YouTube is amazing because it gives you analytics. You guys don't watch the full hour long streams because you guys don't wait for questions. So what we're going to start doing is chopping these videos. At most, we're doing 15 minutes. And so we're at 14 minutes now, so we might as well stop right now. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to stop this right now. I appreciate all you guys for being on here. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to stop the video, and then I'm going to restart another live stream right this moment. And I'm going to answer your guys' questions right now. Right now. So... Off the stream, on the stream. Hop right back on with me. Get with me. Let's have fun. I'm feeling energetic today. I love talking about Dr. Skane. He's an amazing human being. He inspired me, and I hope to inspire you guys. So next video, let's get it going. Oh, and also, before we close, webinar coming at you guys. Check out, check out the link on my website, www.premedproductivity.com. That's coming at you guys either tonight or tomorrow, sometime in the near future here. But check out that webinar. It's going to be amazing personal statement application stuff. I'll see you guys in like 30 seconds.